authorities in every other Western country. So we exist. The estimate now is about a billion people on Earth are non-religious. So are you saying non-religious or non-believers? Not affiliated with any Not affiliated. Religion. It's hard to say because a lot of these polls are asked in different ways. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, especially in the English-speaking world, don't want to associate with atheists because of the of a connotation. They think that means especially immoral or Satan worshiper or some yeah, yeah. cockamamie thing, but it's and not. And also the consequences of, of saying that socially uh, and, yeah. uh, and, and at work as well. I mean, you know, you can face backlash. Even, Michael, you're worried about offending your listeners just yeah. by having people on that may hold a minority view. So so it's, it's good for people to know that it's, uh, you know, that people that feel that way are out there. And with, with my music, I like to think for the people that do feel the same way as me, I'm giving them, you know, I'm reflecting their worldview back at them, which is so nice to hear in music. It's so empowering to hear the way you see the world reflected back at you. And then for the people that don't agree with me, well, I hope, you know, you get to see the inside of someone, another human being that sees the world differently than you, and you can, you know, feel compassion and empathy from that for that perspective. And understand it's still, you know, a good person, even if it's not what you previously imagined. Shelley Siegel is here, and Joe Heinen. Well, we, you are a musician, and you write songs. So let's have a song. What would you like to okay. do? Okay, let's let's do something. Yeah. All right. So this one is a little bit tough. <laughs> it might be a little bit offensive, but um. So I have I'm in my new EP, which I called Holy. And uh, this is a song from the new EP. Now, as I said, I grew up in a religious community, and what was holy what was sacred and elevated was dictated to me by my community what was which uh, items were holy uh, which you know words are holy which people are holy is dictated by uh, men mostly men for centuries pretty much exclusively men and so I think that we should get to decide for ourselves what is holy and sacred to each of us and uh, and so the, this song is sort of like uh, a challenge to the religious hierarchy to people who say I'm, I'm holy and, and you're not, and my beliefs are holy and you're not, and that they, they use that hierarchy to, to place themselves above others. So this is my, uh, my, my challenge to that. This is called Holy Man. <laughs> Our bodies, we must show humility. I believe my body is beautiful, and it belongs to me. What makes a holy man? What does he decree? There is an order to this place, and he's the top of the hierarchy. I believe there's no one above me. I'm a sinner, I'm a whore, a 
Shelly Siegel, live in the WLRN studio. And that's on your latest CD? That is on my new CD, Holy, and that was with Rob J. Robertson on the guitar. Rob, very nice. Uh, I'm in the studio with Shelly Siegel, Rob, and also Joel Heinen, whose new book is called Say What. Joel, I have to tell you how much I enjoyed reading your book. It was it was fun reading it. Was it as much fun writing it? Um, well, it was, a, it was kind of a labor of love. I mean, parts of it were really enjoyable to do, and parts of it were... Um, kind of snarky because some of it's really pretty negative and then there's other parts that are just sort of humor so the negative being what's the negative aspect well i think i was a little harsh uh, on a few <laughs> religious beliefs and religious communities in there um actually um i started writing it when um isis was uh, chopping people's heads off while filming it and putting it on the internet mm -hmm. and so that really annoyed me so that's when i started really looking into islam and of course it's the same religion i mean and um, the same as what? Well, the same God, the, the God of Abraham. Okay. So um, I started really looking into it. I read the Quran and, of course, the Torah and the Bible in, in its entirety at various times, never all at one once because the Bible is so uh, tedious. But um, <laughs> the but when you when you think about that, and so I wrote Allahu Akbar first, and then I decided it was so negative that that's why I added the second part, if you noticed, and praise to some good lords. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I praise uh, Aphrodite and Saraswati and a few other, you know, gods from different religions who are actually very positive um, in their uh, personas. Because really, uh, really uh, and in doing this and having been exposed to a lot, because I lived in Asia for a long time and stuff, um, I come with, uh, with the conclusion that the God of Abraham is, in fact, the worst thing, the most evil, vile thing in all of human mythology. Uh, and I don't think there's any exception to that. I've read a lot of stuff, and, you know, I don't he, think there is. The most so. vile because he was the cause of a lot of conflict. Yeah. And what ISIS is doing is exactly what the good book tells them to do. And the Torah says the same thing, and so does the Old Testament. Kill everybody who's not of your religion. And so they're the ones who are practicing the true religion. <laughs> right. And I kind of make that point, too, because it seems to me that, um, well, the first essay, the genesis of horror porn, that's specifically what it's about. And the second essay is um, the worst badass of all about the God of Abraham. Mm -hmm. So it gets better after that. There's more levity in there when I start talking about Hinduism and Jains and Shintos and Vishnois and, uh, you know, just better religions. Really. It's interesting the way people can read the same book and have so many different yeah. interpretations. Like I remember being a young student learning the Tanakh. We learned like biblical Hebrew. We were studying it in Hebrew and English as well. And I remember, you know, you, you're sort of given this top-down perspective of like this is a holy book. This is the word of God. This is moral. And so I wasn't naturally a very like, um, I guess. I, I was very accepting and trusting, and so I didn't feel any reason to challenge it. And so, you know, I sort of took that as the lens through which I read the book. But once I started questioning to it, and I looked at those stories with a fresh perspective, I was shocked. And I thought, how were we holding up these the, these these people that I believe for so much of my life were our moral heroes? And then you, you read it with a critical eye, and you think, these, these are our heroes? Like, you know, Abraham, uh, which you, you mentioned in the song, Joel, that you played yeah. earlier, Abraham. Yeah, um, I was going to do that one. That he, he um, kicked out... Um, Hagar and Ishmael uh, well, at, at his wife's... Let's hear the song. Yeah. Joel, you have a song yeah. prepared? Perfect. This is the one she was referring to. I'm not nearly as good of a guitarist as Rob or no, singer no, as Shelley, you know. <laughs> I'm just a simple professor of environmental studies. <laughs> In the beginning there was night, then God said, let there be light. And so it was in the cataclysmic tide. One great man lived centuries, he fathered nations and dynasties, and now the sons of Abraham collide. For Isaac was the chosen one, the rightful heir, the favored son, and Sarah's anger fed him deep 
and white And Ishmael, the bastard child, was cast into a desert wild, and so the sons of Abraham collide. But my soul's not saved, I don't believe your ancient specks of prophecy. I only know what I take in my stride. Time marches on, the world is blue. The children are born pure and true until the sons of Abraham collide. So thousands lie dead in Darfur, in Iraq and East Timor, and all God's children they must choose a side. But sides grow weary and sides grow weak, for it's not him, it's hell they seek. Behold the sons of Abraham collide. See angry young men make their plans, strangers in some promised land. See hatred boil the longer time they bide. See bombs go off, see good people die. See hell rain down from a clear blue sky. Behold the sons of Abraham collide. But my soul's not saved, I don't believe your ancient vile hypocrisies. I only know what I take in my stride. Time marches on, the world is blue. The children are born pure and true until the sons of Abraham collide. See the sons of Abraham collide. Behold the sons of Abraham collide. Joel Heinen, live in the WLRN studio. Joel frequents open mics around South Florida, but you don't sing many of those type songs, I suppose. No, I have a lot of funny ones, too, that <laughs> yeah. you know, are more, you know, for the general audience. Be musing songs. <laughs> yeah, be musing songs yes. in the right way. <laughs> yes. I'm in the studio with Joel Heinen and Shelley Siegel. We'll talk uh, more. We'll have, uh, continue our conversation, but we're at the top of the hour, so let me get... Uh, uh, take care of some business. You're listening to Folk and Acoustic Music on 91.3 WLRN and HD1 Miami-Fort Lauderdale, 91.5 WKWM and HD1 Marathon Key West, 90.7 WFLV HD2 West Palm Beach, and 101.9 NPR for the Palm Beaches. We'll return right after these messages. Portraits of Courage, a commander-in-chief's okay. tribute to America's warriors, is at the Society of the uh, Four Arms we'll March 31st, okay. 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 featuring okay? 66 portraits yeah. painted by President Thank George you. W. Bush. You can encounter the faces and hearts of those who answered the nation's call and what learn their bravery. Because of More information is available yeah. at fourarts.org. You've inspired me. Which song I'm going to do next? I inspired a good singer. Close to me. I've often thought so many of my songs would be great if, I, if there was a good singer to sing. Ah, uh, good. Jill, let me just have you say a couple more inches back from the microphone. Uh, sure. That's why they became a Lexus Plus dealership, where you can get one transparent, straightforward price. For the singing, right? Oh, well, if you get too close to these mics, it gets a little static. Ah, okay. Otherwise. So I was a bit... No, it was fine. It was fine. It was just... I feel a bit more comfortable. On the next Sunshine Economy... 
moving money. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to read, Joel. I, just, I love it when you start getting nasty and snarky. <laughs> this is the best South Florida. And 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 this is the best South Florida. Well, if I can just make a few statements from Ron again about how to order it and stuff, because it's better yeah, on Amazon. Absolutely. And, okay. Absolutely. Okay. You can let your child right, we'll back in ten seconds. For this spring break at Young at Art Museum's Spring Art Camp. You can also see artwork and live performances at YAA's Festival of the Arts on March 9th. More at youngatartmuseum.org. Funded in part by Broward Cultural Division. And this is Folk and Acoustic Music. My name is Michael Stock in the studio with Sh- Shelley Siegel and Joel Heinen. And Joel, did I already mention how much you enjoyed your book, Say What? Uh, Irreverent Essays of a Bemused Atheist. It takes a special kind of fan, but uh, thank uh, you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's, is there a church for atheists? Well, the Unitarian Church is pretty much atheist, as I found out. <laughs> uh, I was at a party of a mutual friend of ours, actually, and who who attends that church. This was they always have their you know their winter solstice parties and things like that to honor Yule. And uh, one of the people was because I made the statement in here about our Unitarian Church, which I've gone to sometimes. And I said, I think at least half of them are atheists, and that might be an underestimate. And one of the other guests at the party said, oh, yeah, you're wrong. I did a survey, and it's 70%. <laughs> <laughs> no. so, so if there's a church for atheists. But, you know, Buddhism and the Jain religion pre- preach no gods. So there technically are atheist religions. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I, I always thought it was upsetting because, I mean, I'm Jewish, and I, and I used to belong to a temple, and more than anything else, whether you believe in God or not, it's just the community there yeah. and, right, and the support. Right. And, and I think that's the, that's the very important part. And people point that out all the time, the social importance of churches and, and also the charitable importance of churches. I don't deny that. But as I also talked about in there, we've had our biggest uh, frauds with churches because they're automatically given 501c3 nonprofit status. So, yeah, I think that... Uh, a lot of them do good, but then other people who take advantage of that. So it's okay. it's like anything. Is do you believe in the power of prayer? Well, the power of prayer has been tested, I guess you could say, clinically, forensically, and has been proven to have no effect. But I do think that um, if one gets in for personally, that is uh, intercessionary prayer, that is praying for somebody else. But I do think that. Just uh, having quiet time and time to collect your thoughts, think to yourself, things like this does have effect on the individual. So whether it's praying or whether it's uh, meditating like um, like Buddhists do or whether it's doing yoga, you know, I think that they all have that sort of same sort of calming effect on one's one's brain and one's thoughts and well I, believing in a god it would give you such it gives i imagine it gives people such comfort knowing that there is a being or a power out there stronger that's controlling things you know i almost stepped out of cobra once and i realized that there's a lot of things stronger than me <laughs> you know i i used to ride elephants as part of my job and i realized there's a lot of things stronger than me um and also to me believing in things that for which there's evidence makes the most sense in dealing with our rational lives. The other thing I'd point out very quickly, because I know we're running out in time, um, is um, just the fact that the most vehemently atheistic people I've ever met are the most religious people. And I convey a few of those stories in there, telling fundamentalist Christians, for example, the story of the Ramayana. And they'll be so dismissive and so, who'd believe in that religion? And my comeback is, who'd believe in resurrection and immaculate conception? I mean, you know, every religion takes a lot of things on faith. And and I think the other thing that I mentioned earlier, ISIS proves it. The most vehemently religious people are the most, you know, they just released 5,000 um, Yazidis today that they'd been keeping captive for five years. And they killed most of the men. So these were women and children that they had taken prisoner because they're, um, you know, infidels. Joel Hine in his studio. Well, I certainly enjoyed your book, uh, Say what? And historically, I didn't know. It was, some of our founding fathers were atheists. They were um, the ones that admitted to religion were mostly deist. And Jefferson was probably the most outspoken about it because he wrote the, well, wrote. He just basically took the Bible and cut out all the parts that he thought were nonsense. And so that's the Jefferson Bible. You can still buy that. 
And um, there's a lot of speculation that um, George Washington and, and Thomas Paine were atheists, but they only ever admitted to being deists, and so and uh, specifically not Christian. Like they did not accept any personal gods or personal religions. So deism is just the belief that there's some god out there that got the whole ball rolling, and now he's sitting back and doesn't really manifest himself in this in this world or whatever. Well, Joe, we could go on because to me, the, one of the most frustrating things is, our, as you mentioned, our politics and, and, and the people who believe the, the Bible, I suppose, as these, these fantastic stories as, as facts. So that's, that's always been kind of weird to me. Yeah. But, uh, but thanks for writing the book. Tell us, tell us more. How can we get a hold of the book? So it's been on Amazon since um, last uh, October. If you look for the main title, Say What, you'll find a lot of things because it turns out that's a common title. So the, the um, subtitle is Irreverent Essays of a Bemused Atheist. If you type in anything from Irreverent Essays to Bemused Atheist to my name, it will pop up immediately on Amazon. The paperback version is, I think, 15 or $16, but it's also available on Kindle at half that price. And I, I'd also point out I'm going to the um, LA Times International Book Fair. We will, though um, people listening aren't going to be there, I think that that'll be in mid-April. But then, um, actually, Alexis has talked about having me do a reading at some point at at the Luna Star. Did you expect this kind of reaction to your book? Well, I don't know if there's a reaction yet. You know, I think <laughs> my brother's already saying, "Okay, you, he, my my youngest niece is starting university." He says, "Okay, if you make a lot of money on this, you're paying her tuition." So. <laughs> and I said, "Don't hold your breath. I don't know." <laughs> Uh, I'm in the studio with Joel Heinen. His book is called Say What? Also, uh, Shelly Siegel, and her new CD is called Holy Man. Oh, uh, just Holy? Just Holy. And holy. The, there is a track on there called Holy Man, which we played That's earlier. what we just played. Uh, Shelly, well, let's have one more song from you. Uh, first of all, do you belong to a church? Uh, no, I am. Uh, I run my own corporation. <laughs> do you a... do you play at Unitarian churches? I do actually. We're playing uh, in Meriden, Connecticut, at the the local UU church there. Um, and there are other communities for atheists uh, or mm-hmm. you know non believers, like Sunday Assembly, and just um, you know most cities have local humanist or atheist meetup groups. So... Is there is there fractions of atheists? Do they argue against? Oh yeah, them? absolutely. It's really? just people. You know, it's just <laughs> people are the same no matter what, no matter what they believe. It's um, it's actually quite funny. Sometimes it reminds me of my father runs the uh, an Orthodox synagogue in Melbourne, and sometimes the board meetings remind me of some of the arguments you know I hear with with the atheist movement. But you know that's people, and I think that's that's something to take comfort in that we are actually all very similar. Um, one thing I wanted to say, you know, people think that atheists are really negative or they think they see the anger and they think oh these are just angry unhappy people where is this anger coming from but the anger comes because we want the world to be a better place like you know Joel sees these um these tragedies these horrific acts these crimes against humanity and 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 is angry angered by them because he cares about humanity because we care sorry to speak on your behalf i'm assuming but like, you know we we care and we want the world i hate everybody <laughs> <laughs> stereotypical curmudgeon atheist but we you know we want the world to be a better place and we do care and people say oh you you you're an atheist you don't believe in anything but there's so much i believe in i believe in people i believe in the good of people I also believe that the environment and our planet is something worth saving and so I'm going to play a song that is inspired uh, because Joel talking about his um, his studies oh not studies his tutelage tutelage and um, my this song I'm working with a biologist um, in the northwest and we are creating an EP about the Puget Sound watershed and about all the different animals that live there. And it's got a message of conservation, and it also um, you know, talks about all, all the different species that live there. So uh, this is how a watershed works, and it's called The Watershed. Thousand 
streams carrying debris they bring the land into the sea minerals and sediments supplied by streams traverse the oceans why the oceans why each tributary intertwined with all of life and humankind Provide riffles and pools, riffles and pools. The oyster reefs protect the bay and land from being washed away. The water flowing through their shells in turn will flow through us as well, through us as well. Each form of life is intertwined. All the rest in humankind Good in there. You would get an A in, in any of our classes. <laughs> I can tell That's you. Well, I did have. Oh, so I co-wrote that with Dan Lombardo, who's a, a biologist. Okay, and good. so I did have help. I had my <laughs> human cheat sheet. Just uh-huh. I said, give me more words for bodies of water, so I can find one that rhymes with salmon. You know. Uh, <laughs> like, and I, I did want to point out one other thing. The the essays toward the end of the book get more positive, and so I wrote one called "A Gaggle of Happy Atheists." It talks about all these famous people who have actually are atheists and are very accomplished in life. So it's not all you know. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I I play a lot of gospel music, and I'm, yeah. every time now I play it, I'm saying, "Who's? It's. I mean, is it legit? What? What? I mean, when people sing gospel music, you could feel the spirit happening, oh, yeah. coming through them. But I think that's true. That emotional reaction is true to a lot of kinds of music and a lot of kinds of other things. And I think it's part of the human experience. You know, I think looking at a beautiful scenic vista too, we're all just overwhelmed by it, and you know, so I don't. I just don't th- see those things as religious. I th- see those things as being a result of having a big cerebrum. <laughs> and, I, yeah, I still feel awe yeah. in yeah. so many moments. Awe oh, and yeah. transcendence yeah. in different times of my life. In all kinds of transcendence. Love, yeah. you know, honor, appreciation for all kinds of things. So. Joel Heinen and Shelley Siegel in the studio. Shelley, how can people get a hold of your CD, Holy? Uh, so my CD Holy is available for pre-order on iTunes and Amazon and all the major distributors. But um, a really great way to support uh, indie artists is through Bandcamp. So you can pre-order it on Bandcamp. Uh, and you can come catch me at one of my shows to grab a CD from me. Also, uh, I have a Patreon, which is a really great way to support artists and creators. Uh, it's patreon.com slash Shelley Siegel. And uh, for a dollar a month, you can download this whole album straight away and uh, all of my solo back catalog as well as new content that I put out every single week and also group songwriting sessions so you can write a song with me and maybe come hear me play it live. Oh, good idea. Shelley Siegel in the studio and Joel Heinen, his book, Say What? A Reverend Essays of a Bemused Atheist. 
Joel and Shelly, thank you both for so much for coming on. Thanks for having us. Yes, thanks for having us. Here's music from Kate Campbell. Excellent. That was fun. Well, that was fun. Yeah. All right. All right. That was great. I thought it was great. <laughs> That's your coffee. I kept it. Oh, thank you. I kept it really light because yeah. I didn't want to hear you get nasty to anybody. Uh, any specific <laughs> politician. You know, you know, you know that I utter a four-letter word. <laughs> yes. I like Tourette's syndrome. I'll just say one. Yes. I'm going to take a picture, right? No, let's get a quick picture.